Bob here, Chopper Bob Customs, and work continues on Uncle Dirtbag 61 Chevy C10. Uh, floor replacements, rocker panel replacements, A and B pillar repairs, cab corners, door bottoms inside and out. Um, as you can see, the bracing is gone because now the cab is locked in solid with the body mounts on all four corners, basically. So I can get that out of my way. Uh, of course, now that I'm on the outside, it doesn't need to be out of the way that much, but uh, it makes it easier to get in and out of the truck anyway. Uh, so the first thing uh, we're going to be doing um, is asking you to subscribe to my videos, uh, like my videos, comment on my videos, hit that notification bell. Uh, for those of you that have already done that or are doing that, uh, thank you very much. Um, and uh, with that, uh, let's turn our attention to the uh, to the Chevy here. Um, today, on this video, what I'm going to be doing is putting the rocker panel on and uh, hopefully the cab corner. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, one of the first things, and let me see if I can get this camera to tilt down a little bit. I've had somebody say you need to have somebody video for you while you're working. That'd be great. I'm looking for volunteers. Okay, let's see if I've got this. Yeah. I don't know whether you can see this very well or not, but basically when they built these panels, particularly the front panel, um, they have excess material on it. And in part, I know it's excess material here because one, it doesn't run parallel. It's a lot longer here than it is back here. And then when I put the um, uh, rocker panel up here, it this might be just a little bit short, but I can live with short, but long, because the rocker panel has a lip on the bottom of it. If it's long, the lip won't slide back in there, and you either gotta cut the lip off or you gotta cut this off. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and marked this about where I want to cut it off, and I'm going to take the uh, cutoff wheel and uh, have at it. Okay, so now the next thing that you need to be aware of when you're installing the rocker panel, and let's see, oh yeah, that's good. That's going to be real good. Um, uh, is that there's drains and um, actually this one back here is a is a drain slash raceway for the wiring harness because the wiring harness comes in this hole back here comes down through here and then runs down in this channel right here. Uh, but there's also a drain then that goes on into the rocker panel box so that it can drain out the bottom. Um, and we'll look at the, what we've got for the bottom in a minute. But basically, um, you don't, the, the rosettes go in down through this panel into the floor panel. So, and unfortunately you can't use your punch because you've got this lip here. Um, so what you have to do is you have to drill them all. <laughs> and you don't want to drill them over top of the drain. So with that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark out where the drain is and I'm going to put a bunch of X's indicating don't drill holes here, Bob. And there's one up here. So this will tell me where I don't want to drill. Uh, now, I'll need to have some up here in the front and in the back across here and then of course across the bottom. So on the bottom, it's a little bit easier because you're going to be putting the holes in this flange right here and you've got a drain right here, it's an indentation and that lets the water out 
place to trap the leaves so the water can't get out and then it fills up with water and rots out your rocker panel but you've got one right here so we know where not to drill these holes but these holes right here there's no indication of where you're not supposed to drill them unless you put it in there so now I know no holes here and no holes here because you've got these indentations here and here to let the water drain out of the cab. Okay, let me get set up on the bench and start drilling holes. Okay, some of these can be punched fortunately, uh, but most of them have to be drilled. So I'm gonna go ahead and punch the ones I can punch, drill the ones I have to drill. There's a lot of holes uh, just across the bottom. Uh, 21 drill holes. I, I lost count at the top here. There's probably close to 50 holes that have to be um, made and filled uh, on this panel. through primer and it'll be ready to go okay time to put in some rosettes uh, on the other side I I measured from from this ledge right here up and put marks on it and all that and then when I went to put this on I realized that because this registers on top of the floor piece and there's little indentations on this side on the front and the back where you can't get it up too high and this keeps you from going too low you're kind of locked into where it needs to be and if it's not correct what you're going to have to do is trim the door uh, fortunately on the other side I didn't have to trim the door uh, all of it went together perfectly so basically all you got to do is put in a lot of rosettes
Okay, time to clean the nozzle, get set up to do the ones across the bottom. <clears throat> okay, so I have the uh, I have the nozzle cleaned on the MIG. Um, I've got it clamped down at both ends. I've got my earplugs in to keep hot dingle balls from going in my ears. And um, I needed to bring the center up just a little bit. The great thing was all I had to do was force this in here. It brought it up just the right place. I didn't have to hook up the pump or do any of that. So with that, let's get these final rosettes in. It's a new day and um, I was reviewing the videos from yesterday and for whatever reason while I was doing the bottom rosettes the camera quit working. Um, the hard drive wasn't full, still had 110 minutes left on it. Um, maybe I got a bad signal from the uh, welding or maybe uh, maybe my equipment's just getting a little bit old at any rate. Uh, so, but you got most of it, and basically, um, I got all the rosettes put in the bottom. Uh, I did miscalculate on the front, the forward two, the forward most two holes, those two right there, did not have an inner rocker panel behind them, so basically I just filled them. Of course, all these need to be ground a little bit, uh, to clean them up, but, uh, the rocker panel's in, and it went in really well. And then I turned my attention to the um, um, uh, cab corner, thinking that it would go well as well. <laughs> and it did not. Uh, that's one of the things about these panels. Um, you've got a 60, what, 64 year old now truck, um, uh, and you've got panels that are made overseas. And as in the case of the front floorboards, the front floorboards are great right up to the point where you get to the toe board. And then you have to do some extensive modification. That was that way on both sides. Um, the rear extension of the floor, great on both sides. All you had to do was cut them to fit. Uh, didn't really have to do any modifications to either one of those. Same thing with the uh, A-pillar repair panels. Uh, the um, um, uh, kick panels uh, didn't have to do any modifications other than trimming them to fit. Uh, the rocker panels were great on both sides. Uh, the cab corner on the other side fit great. Uh, there's still two small holes that I've got to, to fill in on it. Uh, the door skins, um, the outer ones are the same side to side and so I'm assuming that the one I have to put on the left door, the driver's door, is going to be just as good as the one for the passenger's door because they're exactly the same part. The uh, inner door panel, uh, of course, is right and left, uh, so I don't know how the left one is yet, but the right one, it it fit really great too. Other, like I said, other than the fact you got to trim it. Uh, but this cab corner, and, and you can see, even now that I've started modifying it, um, it is too far forward at the bottom and and too far back at the top and that was after I it was like this when I started um, modifying it so that this area right in through here would fit in the right location if I tried to make this side over here fit this came up to the point where the bottom of it was clear up here and uh, so what I've started doing is I've started taking a slice out of the corner here. I still have a bump. I'm probably going to have to do a little bit more cutting and hammer and dolly work on this to get it back into shape. And the truth of the matter is I'm probably not going to do it uh, perfect. Uh, this corner obviously has got some dents that have been repaired with Bondo. And... You know the the goal here is to keep mud and bugs and 
and dirt and fumes out of the cab and that's what we're going to get done here and it'll look presentable but it's not going to be 100 percent perfect but with that let's get started uh doing more modifications and fitting and welding So part of what we've got going on here is along the top, it's actually pretty good. Um, the, the length of this, it, it could probably be about a sixteenth of an inch longer. Uh, I'll see how it works when I go to weld it because I do have a bit of a bump there and I might be able to get a little bit of, of clearance here. But down at the bottom, I don't know whether you can see this in the video or not, but at this point right here, it starts sticking out this way. And then at the back, when you come across here, there's a, there's a hump right here. And it's only at the bottom. The top is good. At the bottom is where it has uh, too much material. And I've gone ahead and put a slit in here and brought it together and tacked it. But I think what I need to do is run a cut through here one more time and um, see if I can't get this moved into shape a little bit better. Um, uh, and um, do a little bit of hammer on dolly, hammer off dolly, to see if I can't get this hump out of this. And also, and I'm also pulling this in uh, to get it to, to mate up where it belongs. And so there's just too much material down here at the bottom. Um, and so one way you can take care of that is to take and put a saw kerf in it and, um, <clears throat> and uh, pull it together. Um, there are ways to shrink it, but I really don't have the equipment to do that correctly. So this is one way to do it. And then, of course, when you weld it, it's going to shrink a little bit, too. So that pulled this in pretty good here. It's got a natural bump that occurs, but it basically comes back in line. And now this basically is, I've gotten most of the hump out of it. I may try to uh, yeah. do here is I'm probably going to go ahead and go on the inside with this on a dolly and peen that and see if I can't get it out. I'm not going to videotape that. Uh, let me put this on hold and I'll be back. Okay, so with a little bit of <clears throat> hammer and dolly 
and uh, picking it out, grinding it to uh, eliminate the weld proud, uh, running it through the planishing hammer. It's got just a few spots here that I'm not thrilled with, but on the whole, when you consider where it came from, it's pretty good. And I also went ahead and crisped up this this uh, break right here and managed to move it just a little bit so that I've got a longer run from here to here. So now it fits pretty good. So now I have to address my uh, efforts to what's going on down here, which is a complete mess. Um, but uh, the, the bottom line on this is, this right here was where they had put the break in for this flange that is supposed to weld to this flange right here. And I flattened it out completely. I've cut just the very tip of it off and it just barely touches when this is in the right place. So I'm gonna have to figure out how I'm going to get a flange on this so that when it's in here like this that, that I have a, um, a, a good contact and I also have a drain. Um, because this is a trap, this is probably the reason why they rust out back here uh, because debris gets down in there and blocks the drain and, and lets it run out and what I'm contemplating is possibly letting this be the drain um, but the other thing is there's a huge gap from here to here that that should come up to this right here and it doesn't do it. So I'm going to have to build something to go in there. I've got the same issue on the other side, although the other side, this flange was in the correct location that I was able to go ahead and get it to attach to this so I could get a couple of rosettes to hold the bottom of this in place. But this one, like I said, there's something wrong with this panel. I don't know what it is, but um, it obviously uh, has some issues, and we're addressing it. So... The uh, first thing I'm going to do is uh, weld up this cut right in through here. This is uh, one of my first attempts at trying to rectify this problem because uh, I wasn't exactly sure where I needed to move stuff around to make this happen. And hindsight being 2020, I probably shouldn't have made this cut. But uh, you know, sometimes it's one step forward and two steps back. Uh, other times it's two steps forward and one step back and as long as you have more of the second than the first you're going to go places. So you got to take the good with the bad. in place, I'm going to take that tab that I just welded to the, to the back, welded back in because I had cut it by mistake, and I'm going to go ahead and try and knock it up into place so that it matches the front. Okay, so it's just one tack. I thought, ah, I don't need my PPE. And then I thought, boy, that's just a sure way to get hot slag down your ear and catch your shirt on fire at the same time. So I went ahead and put it on just for one little tack.
I'll get this ground up and we'll see how we got going and then I'm gonna start working on this flange that's missing. Okay, so with a little bit of masking tape, I've made a pattern and um, there will be a flange that comes up here that I'll have to make. Okay, so this will be the flange that gets tipped up that way. Describe this and get it cut out.
Okay. <laughs> it's been a long day. So I've got some more cleanup work to do on the uh, rosettes on the rocker panel and at the bottom of the cab corner here. But and it's it's really <laughs> upsetting that the thing is I think it'll look great, but I know that there's a little bit of oddness to it right in through there. It's going to take a skim coat of uh, a filler, but for what the truck is, it's good. If if this were something different, I probably would have looked for a different cab corner than this one. Uh, but this one's going to be just fine. It's solid as a rock. It's going to keep the mud, dirt, mud daubers, and all that out of it, and uh, the fumes. Um, but it took a little bit of rebuilding, and uh, it's still got just a little bit. I think it's going to require yeah, a little bit more than a credit card thickness of uh, filler. I might be able to get back in the back there and move that out a little bit. Um, but anyway, uh, so I'm going to leave this at that. I'm going to say the cab is basically done. Uh, the next thing that I've got to do is the door and once I get the door done it'll go on here and then this will go back to Uncle Dirtbag so uh, as I said before please subscribe please like please comment uh, uh, please hit that notification bell uh, I know I'm gonna have to stop working on this for at least a couple days um, I've got to get back on the uh, I got some things I got to do on the Delray and then my neighbor wants me to pre-trip inspect his uh, avalanche the dealer told him he needed a whole bunch of parts that he probably doesn't need. Anyway, so thanks for walking, watching. Yeah, thanks for walking. Thanks for watching, and uh, Chopper Bob out. <laughs>